fucking talk golden to me. It's my dream to have a golden beard. <laughs> Younger but looks older. I'll even try a squat. Here we go. The, uh, the uh, six of clubs. The golden. Welcome to another episode of the Talk Golden to Me video podcast. Your host, Evan Golden, Golden TV, our studios, as always, in the law offices of Berman and Berman. Today is an exciting episode for me because I get to talk to an icon in South Florida when it comes to real estate. This woman, you've probably seen her in magazines. She was featured in Women on Top. She's a top producer. She has an online course coming out, and she could also teach you how you can earn millions of dollars through real estate. So I'm excited to learn some tips and tricks. We brought her right here in the studio. All our viewers that are watching, get off of my face. I will give you Miss Mari Juliet. Hi. Hi, Mari. How are you? Good. How are you? Fantastic. Fantastic. So um, I'm very excited to understand a little bit, you know, about what you're doing in real estate. I understand that you've kind of conquered or mastered the niche here in South Florida. And there's a lot of real there's a lot of realtors out there, obviously. Yeah, especially a lot of, in South Florida. A lot yeah. of competition, but uh, pretty awesome that you've been featured right now on WomenOnTheTop.com and want to hear about this online course that you have developing and. You know, congratulations just to all your success and being Associate Month and a top producer. But real estate, I guess what separates you from the millions of other real realtors that are out there? Well, I mean, when I first started, I, I had actually just been offered, because like I told you, I did medical device sales for three years. And I've always been definitely a go-getter. And I was offered this incredible position. Like, I really was like, this is going to be my job for life. It, you know, I'll be set. And the company went under and it was this, you know, whole, holy shit moment. <laughs> and it spurred me to just say, you know, I, ha I just got my real estate license. I got it while I was working full time. And let me just try it out and see if I can really make money and, and do well. And I've pretty much exceeded what I was going to make in the previous job. So it's worked out for me. <laughs> um, and there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, I think... There is, there's obviously so much competition. I mean, even my own parents are my competition. I, you know, it's everywhere in South Florida. Wait, so you have a relative that that's a real estate agent as well? My Both of my parents are oh realtors. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you guys are like fighting for listings and stuff? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say fighting, but when I first started, I really was like, okay, I'll, you know, follow my parents' footsteps. And they were kind of like, you're on your own. So I think that and the tough love of that has helped me a lot just throughout my life because I've always known I have to work my ass off to get what I want, basically. So tell me, I want to understand this because, you know, I Google your name and everything is about you providing business tips and strategies. Aren't, don't you want to keep this to yourself so you're just selling all the properties, all the real estate? Why are you sharing all this information? So the thing is, I probably get a message, at least one message a day from people, whether they're from Florida or not, but people that are asking me for tips and asking me for help of how to get started and why give out that information, you know, just electively when I could really provide a course that would be more helpful and that could, you know, bring more financial stability to my life. So um it it's it's i'm going to get the questions anyway it's just a matter of how i'm going to answer them and what format i'm going to do that and you also have a lot of i guess money saving tips along along the way yes tell me about that so honestly i'm the kind of person where i'm like on eggshells until it closes because i understand that if something's under contract if something's down to the 10 minutes before the signatures on the page there's nothing there's no money so I know a lot of realtors and a lot of people in my life that they put something under contract and they're going to spend it. I kind of just act like it doesn't happen. And even when I have a closing, I act like nothing happened. And that really gives me the financial stability to then invest that money instead of buying a Gucci purse. <laughs> it probably helps you with the mental aspect of it because how many deals fall through at the end? And right. You're already, like you said, you're already kind of you're counting it before it's even there. Exactly. So. And real estate really is such a head game. Um, I think... If you, you can 100% psych yourself out of anything in this business, and I've had so many, so many, um, you know, cancellations and stuff like that that could have thrown me in that direction that I could really dwell on. But again, with my upbringing, my parents were really like, if something happens, you get an hour to be upset about it, and then you got to move on. So I think that has really helped me just be resilient. And again, like with modeling or with any other job that I've had, it, they, it all really involved a lot of rejection. So I've been able to just let it roll off my back and be fine. Wow. 
I like that attitude. We're talking to Mari Juliet. She is one of the top female real estate agents in the state of Florida. And all our viewers, they come from, you know, not only the state of Florida, from all over the country, sometimes even over the world. And Florida is, to me, look, it's paradise. Yes. Um, whether you want to come here for a second home, a vacation property, a retirement destination, Florida has everything you want, you know, from a live, work, play kind of lifestyle atmosphere, correct? It does. And I am born and raised here. And I actually did a post on my Instagram yesterday um, promoting the Airbnb aspect that you can take advantage of here. So Tell me about that. I have a ton of... Oh, because so many people want to come down here. So yeah. You... So it's basically taking, taking advantage of living where they vacation. So I have a ton of buyers and investors who do buy multiple properties for Airbnb because they see the mass income potential of that compared to a conventional rental. And in Florida, it's season all year round. Yeah, you're going to see a dip in the summer, but all in all, they're booked consistently. So wait, you could make, so say I have a second property in Florida. Could I make more money trying to just rent that out, lease it out for the year or doing the Airbnb, breaking that up throughout the year? Definitely Airbnb. Wow. Um, it's, I mean, typically you're going to pay 20 to 25% to a management company. But you're looking at, I mean, for instance, I have a client that's buying a 3-2 with a pool. They'll probably net 30 minimum a year, whereas I I just made a conventional investment for myself, which is not even going to come close to that. So if you have a property, it depends on the property too. If you have a property that looks nice, it's in good condition, it's well-maintained, it's by the beach, it's a home run. It's a no-brainer. Tell me more about the attitude. It seems that a lot of your articles and a lot of your tips and strategies have to focus on kind of the mental strength in real estate. Yeah. Why? Is there a lot of mental challenges, a lot of <laughs> obstacles? Yeah. I mean, I think I don't think I've ever done a deal where it's totally smooth and there's no issues. And there's a lot of um, egos in play also. I do run into a lot of male people that I work with that um, – they really don't take me seriously from the jump because I'm young and because I'm a female, but I definitely put them in their place right away. I mean, I am, I do present myself like I'm the boss and I did that from day one. So I think that really did help me. You cannot go into something when you're up against people that have been doing this for 50 years and say, oh, I don't have experience in this or that. You got to like fake it till you make it. Listen, women women empower women with confidence, but you know your stuff. And, and if you're looking for real estate, what's do you have like a specialty in real estate in Florida? Do you have kind of a niche or is it all over? I'm all over because I grew up here. So my, my focus is really Broward and Palm Beach County. Um, like I said, I was a rep in medical sales. So I had all of Broward County, a lot of Palm Beach County, but I focus mostly on east. So I grew up east. I know the east side of Florida um, and you know, I think it's the best place to be. For me, it's like if you're going to live in Florida, try to live by the beach if you can, you know, and I try to really promote the neighborhoods that I feel passionate about. And that's a huge thing, too. Like you're talking about a head game, you're talking about all these things. But if you're not passionate in what you're doing and it's something that you don't have a salary, you're not going to make it. You know, you have to be passionate. You have to believe in it and you have to let everything roll off because shit's going to fly at you 24 seven. Tell me about with what's going on with mortgage rates and people refinancing. Is it is now a great time to buy? Should people – can you educate me yeah, on that Yeah, so we're kind of hitting like the end of the seller's market and we're getting into the buyer's market because the interest rates are a lot lower now. You can get in the threes um, where bef last year I'd say the lowest you could get is probably 5%. Um, but – and then the sellers, I mean this is kind of the time to list your house because you're not going to get what – you know, everybody's kind of seeing it go in, in the direction that there's so much inventory on the market. Um, it used to be that you could throw your property up and kind of see what you can get. Now it's, it has to be priced right. It has to be what, it has to be totally renovated too. That's a huge change that I've seen from people who want something to flip and renovate to now people want everything completely done, completely well-maintained and a huge epidemic, I would say, in South Florida is really bad uh, contractor work. So I see a ton of flips that look great in pictures. And you go in person, you're like, who did this? You know, we're gonna have to rip all this out. Aye, aye, aye. So it's got to be like a mint property at the right price to sell it for, for a top dollar. 
Um, but yeah, we are definitely getting into a buyer's market here for sure. On the remodeling front, is there a certain area of the house that people maybe should remodel first? Do you look at the, the, the pool patio, the kitchen, the bathrooms, or, or, I mean, you're pretty much saying the whole house has to obviously be remodeled, yeah, but I if mean, you want to, if you have budget to maybe do one part of the house and you want to really inc increase the value, where right. would you start? Honestly, I would start with the windows cause that's huge. Everybody wants oh, impact the most windows. Ex the most expensive <laughs> the one. The most expensive thing. I mean, it could be a fantastic, beautiful, gorgeous house that doesn't have impact windows, and that puts up a lot of red flags for people, um, even though I see people put shutters on their impact windows. But I would say, like, definitely recommend going the – if you're going to renovate your house, don't do the medium brown cabinets. Don't do the dark. Everybody likes light with gray and kind of the more modern, clean look which is easy to do if you have a good structure. So I think people get overwhelmed and they see these little things as like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to put all this money into it, but it really doesn't have to be that way. You can kind of work it to make it. And the impact windows, I, I read an article that um, you're gonna save money on insurance, right? Yes, yeah. And then obviously you don't have to buy shutters or pay someone right. to put up shutters. Right, I mean, it takes away the hassle and as we just saw with Dorian almost hitting us, you know, you don't have that like, holy shit moment, I've got to put them up, you know? Uh, well, they're pretty expensive, right? Hurricane impact windows? Yeah, they are. They definitely are, but they're what people expect now because they don't want to go into a situation where they're already putting themselves out or putting themselves at risk. Most of these companies, they finance it, pay, yeah. it, pay it out over the years. Exactly. Year and then I would say next would be definitely the kitchen. But those are things like, like I said, if you have a medium brown cabinet kitchen with nice countertops, just paint the cab the cabinets when you go to sell it or change the hardware. Like little things like that really trick people's eye and it makes such a big difference. It's incredible. You know, most people that have been pretty successful, you know, you, you kind of find out their roots or how they made their money. And there's a good percentage of people that made it through real estate. Everyone mm -hmm. kind of says, hey, real estate's the ticket. Real estate's the golden ticket, no pun intended, on our show, the way to you know, to get rich. Right. Um, you have right here on your Instagram, and she's a great follow. Make sure you guys check out on Instagram, Mari Juliet. Um, go right to her Instagram. But it says here, contact me to find out how I close a million dollars plus a month. Yes. Tell me about that quote. So I didn't even realize that I was closing this amount because, like I said, when I have a closing, I don't really go crazy. I don't count what, how much I'm going to make anymore because I realize that that can jinx you. You know, I'm very like superstitious about that stuff. Um, but once I kind of looked at back over the six months, because I only started, this would be my second year, but I was working full time my first year. So I looked back and I was like, wow, I've netted, you know, this amount and I've closed a million a month or more. And it has been really consistent. And it's not easy for it to be that consistent because I think a lot of people, like you said, oh, you could sell a few houses and then you're set. But my mind does not work that way. I wake up every day with like this thing in my head where I'm like, I have to get everything done. Every listing I have is like over my shoulders all day. You know, <laughs> like I'm always thinking about work. People definitely call me a workaholic. Um, which I'm fine with because it's something that I love. But I think it could be a compliment. You're, you're, yeah. you're not only motivated, you're passionate and you care yeah. and, you, and you live and breathe it. And if you're in real estate, you're kind of like on the in on all the good deals too. <laughs> so when it's time for me to invest, I mean, I just invested in something, but I get kind of the first dib. So I do a lot of off market. I work with a lot of developers and people that have been in the business forever. I'll go to breakfast with them. I'll go just to get knowledge. You know, every, you can learn from anybody. Nobody knows everything. So pretty impressive what you've done in just such a short time in your career. Obviously, being a top producer, awesome article with women on top. That must have been cool to be uh, featured on that. Yeah, it's exciting. And what's most exciting for me, because, you know, you don't know when we're when you're putting stuff out on social media, you know, you kind of have that voice in your head like or do people think this is annoying or they think it's whatever but I've gotten so much good feedback from people being inspired and people that I've known forever that are really cheering me on and it's so amazing it's such a positive vibe that I get from them and it's really been awesome I mean I have such a great sphere of influence just from being from South Florida but um, through social media, I'm really able to connect with people all the time and and get to that point and get to those cool milestones even being here you know like like Okay, I'm asked to be on a podcast. That's pretty cool. So it's exciting. No, your hard, your hard work and, and your work ethic is certainly being acknowledged and appreciated. And um, 
you know, it's interesting what you were saying to me just even earlier before we started even rolling and just kind of dealing, you know, in, in a business and, and being a woman and with blonde hair and having kind of a modeling background. If people do searches on you and, you know, automatically they kind of have that stereotype, right? Yeah. And, and you had to not only over, you have to over, not only are you new in the business, but you had to overcome that as well. You do. And I did experience that also in medical sales because I had people who, when I would go to their offices, maybe they would say something about my Instagram or whatever. And it really is a, it's a learning experience and emotional intelligence. And that's really what I kind of pride myself on is being able to be very cognizant of the people around me and what they're thinking, what they're feeling. You know, if they're feeling one way, I'm not going to come in and be bubbly, Mari, like in their face. You know, it's really important to understand other people and really care about what they're saying because I think people pick up on that. And I've realized actually lately because when I was coming up with the course and all this stuff it really is such a relationship business and so much about your personality so if you're not like excited and stoked like for instance I went to go test drive a car the other day and the guy had such a bad attitude and it's like my dream car you know and then I left there like I don't even want the car he turned now. you off yeah and I even said are you a salesperson like come on <laughs> like, so real estate there is you know obviously there's a customer service aspect to it and yeah. you have to you have to be able to build kind of relationships and you have to connect with people I think at the end of the day people like doing business with people they like or enjoy or trust and, yeah and they have some type of bond with so you really have to kind of make that connection 100% and it's not a and that's another huge lesson is that it's not a short term it's not like you just close and then you never see the people again you've really got to stay in contact with them I mean I have a ton of repeat clients um, that will buy three properties in a month you know like it's and it's about really having that connection and I really do consider most like I would say 90% of my clients my friends or part of my family or whatever because and I'll confide in them like about anything you know and I love that because I'm really am somebody that always likes to be around people I don't like to be alone <laughs> well definitely people are calling you for real estate any real estate needs whether we're talking investments flipping leasing renting you call Mari Juliet, she will take care of you. And, and she's not one of those real estate snobs, even though she's closing big big listings. You, you'll talk to a lot of clients because there's oh, a lot yeah. of hidden gems out there. And what maybe, you know, look like maybe not the best property, you probably could see through and see some renovations and see, you know, see its true value. Absolutely. And that's kind of where I get the most excited. And I really work with any price range. Like people will actually ask me, you know, I don't think you work in the, I, I work with anyone. I really, it doesn't matter to me. Like I said, I don't count. My chickens before they hatch, I don't really, I see the big picture, you know, and it's more about getting to as many people as possible and really helping them out. Is there uh, new construction still left? In, I mean, I feel like there's, are we running out of land? Or are they just knocking old houses no, down? No, in Boca, there's a ton of new construction. Is so there? I actually have one under contract with a client right now in um, by Highland Beach. Um, but I'd say uh, over the area of five streets, there's probably six or seven new construction on the water. Um, but I do, I do see that. I see um, developers kind of honing in on certain areas. Like I, I really um, promote Pompano Beach a lot because that's where I was born and that's where I'm from. And they keep on improving that area too. They, they really do. And now I live there. I just invested in there. It's like something I'm passionate about because they always said that they were going to make those improvements when I lived there before in high school. And you you missed school. out on it, right? Well, now I'm now I now get to be part of it. Now I get to invest in it. Now I get to see it blossom, and it's exciting. They see. They said they were going to do it. They, maybe they just never said when. Yeah, exactly. Twenty years later. But <laughs> hey, listen. Th th and there's so many great play. Look, for me, from West Palm to Key West, it, it is just paradise, in my opinion. And it is something always going on. Great fundraisers, great events. You so know, much opportunity. There really is. You just have to believe in it and and look for it and be like you have to be really on top of it because the good deals and I try to really express this to my clients the good deals are going to be gone in a day you know they're not the ones that are sitting there for months and months and months so what about um what about like these these foreclosure properties I hear stories of people like they're not even paying their mortgage and they're living in these houses for years that that upsets me yeah I am not very a huge fan of the foreclosure <coughs> market and that whole aspect because I did actually have experience working with wholesalers when I first started and I didn't understand fully the 
um, what it would do to my reputation, I guess, because they're the kind of people who they put something under contract, then they have a due diligence period where they pretend like they're going to do an inspection and they're bringing in investors to basically make five grand off the conversion. Uh And then I quickly cut that out. I was like, I'm not going to risk my reputation. Even though they were putting in a million offers a day, it's not worth it to me. I'd rather kind of go the conventional route. And with foreclosures, a lot of people don't understand that you're going against the seasoned investors that are cash buyers. So if you are financing or um, or you want a, a solid inspection period to really check out the property, a lot of times you're in the bidding war and then you have no inspection period or you have to pay cash and then you're kind of stuck in a situation that you might not want to be in. It just bothers me, people that are living in houses not paying their mortgages. and. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I try to kind of stay away from that whole, mm. whole aspect of it. But, I mean, some people thrive. Some people only do foreclosures. And, you know, you have to foresee the market, too. If the market crashed tomorrow, the people who specialize in foreclosures are going to be banking, you know. So I do – that's another thing. I really have a lot of forethought, so I don't – just think of right now it's like what is what is going to give me security what's going to make me okay I always think that tomorrow I could be completely dead poor you know like that's just how I live my life and I think that is a huge part of what drives me every day because you have to be a self-starter you can't do this business if you're not because nobody's lighting a fire under your ass to get to work um, so you kind of have to have that anxiety all the yeah, time. Yeah, you got to have that driven. And you got to set personal goals, I'm sure, yeah. long term, short Oh, yeah. Term. Goals are huge. I think every time I've set a goal that I – and I always set a goal that's really out of what everybody thinks I can do. So if I say – Reach, you, girl, reach. Right. Like I think if I said when I started, oh, I want to close a million a month, everyone would be like, yeah, whatever, never going to happen. And But I believe it, you know, and, and I do it. So if you – if you feel like what I and what I really try to like present to women in the industry, especially, um, again, it's all in your head. So I think women have been conditioned to kind of look to a man for the answer to for the final say, you know, like they can have their opinion, whatever. But the man's going to be the one that really knows it all. And they make the right decision. But that's not the case. You know, like if I listen to every guy that told me what to do I wouldn't be where I am right now you know so trust yourself and I feel like trusting yourself is really the biggest key because that's what's gonna take you nobody else is gonna believe in you like yourself great advice I like that well we appreciate your time I have to talk to you a little bit about Instagram because you have over a hundred thousand followers and and it's a great follow and pretty real and authentic sharing everything about your life mm-hmm. on it, which is awesome. But I'm assuming this has been a great tool and asset for you through, for real estate. And I think there's so many people that are not taking advantage of Instagram for a marketing advertising side. I mean, you think about how yeah. many hours you spent on, I'm sure you could talk about how important that's been for your career and your business. It's huge. And you're exactly right. I think any industry should take advantage of Instagram and take advantage of social media. Um, even, you know, I come across people that have their own businesses and they don't even have a page. And I'm like, you're really missing out on a Mm -hmm. lot. I mean, it's, it's most of the people that I interact with as far as making deals and stuff happen are people that I've known in the past, but they would never probably reach out to me if I didn't have the presence that I do. And I do try to make it as transparent as possible and as fun as possible. I don't want a page that's just about real estate or, just about invest, you know, because that can be very boring. And I, I really started my following my page through modeling, so I didn't want to lose that aspect of it. Um, but it is an amazing way to connect with people. I feel like people are very um, much more receptive than I expected uh, to all the information that I provide, and and it is the biggest blessing. Honestly, it really helps me a lot. Well, we appreciate you sharing some of your tips today on our show here, and. Uh, All our viewers and listeners, make sure you follow her on Instagram. That's M-A-R-I-J-U-L-I-E-T-T-E. That is Mari Juliet on Instagram. She's a top producer, real estate agent, and we have here on the Talk Golden to Me video podcast show. So any other words of wisdom or advice before we sign off here? Because you're full of a lot of knowledge, and (laughs) I love your positive attitude. And look, we try to spread golden vibes, golden energy to our guests, and you've been sending in to our viewers words of wisdom, words to live by for our guests. 
just keep going. Like, don't let the voice inside your head deter you because even if you haven't started yet and you say, I meet so many people that are like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Just do it. Just start it. So many people are way too detail oriented to get started and to get there. And being detail oriented is a great thing. But if you're going to be an entrepreneur and you're going to really start something, just do it and the rest will will figure itself out. I like that. Listen, a lot of people talk. You gotta, you have to be a man or woman of action. So uh, don't just say it, do it. And, and that's a great motto. And uh, you don't want to have any regrets in life. So viewers and listeners, I hope you learned a lot of information today on real estate. Uh, we're learning from the best, someone that's hardworking, proving herself the numbers speak for themselves. Again, follow her on Instagram, Mari Juliet. Viewers, listeners, we appreciate your time. Subscribe, share, like, do all those things. That's what keeps the show going. As always, from the lofts of Berman & Berman, this is another episode of the Talk Golden To Me video podcast show. We appreciate your time. Till next time, we are out of here. Bye.